Okay, I think we're live. <laughs> uh, like I said, I need a director for these things. That way I can get all of this synced and going at the same time and you guys don't have to wait for me to gear everything up. But thank you uh, for joining me again. We're on day nine of the 30 day Facebook challenge and uh, or Facebook live challenge. I'm trying to do one video every day for 30 days where I'm either teaching you something or telling you something about myself um, and just interacting with you guys and getting to know you guys better and letting you guys get to know me. Um, let me see if I can get y'all's comments pulled up. Tonight, I'm going to be showing you guys a flower tutorial. Um, I've done this tutorial a couple times before, but never with the two camera angles. So I'm really hoping that both of these camera angles are working correctly. And I'm going to get this pulled up on my ad iPad before I get started and make sure it is. My internet's trying to move a little slow on me, and this is an older iPad, so it moves a little slow too. It's a hand-me-down. All right, looks good, okay. So last night I had the picture in picture going, but tonight I have figured out how to do a side by side. So I don't know if you guys like this better or not, but let me know what you think. I think it kind of uh, looks better, but I don't know. Susan says it is, thank you, Susan. Y'all say hey as you're coming on. Hi, Jimmy, hi, Susan, hi, Nikki. You're working on your cupcake. Nikki picked up a blank cupcake door hanger from my house today. I wanna see a picture of it when you're done. Hey, Bridget. You guys have just been waiting on me, haven't you? Hello, Miranda from Nebraska. You're a long way away. Okay, um, <laughs> first of all, before I start painting, I need to address the uh, post that I made earlier today, the two truths and one lie thing. I <laughs> Number one was, uh, I'm distantly related to Marilyn Monroe. Number two was, uh, when I grew up, I wanted to be a coroner. And number three was that I had been struck by lightning before. So in case you didn't vote on that previous one, what does everybody think right now is the lie? I'm just curious. A lot of the consensus on the, uh, the one earlier today, I think there were 15 votes for number three, which was that I had never been struck by lightning. They they thought that that just wasn't possible. So I'm curious to see what you guys think. Jimmy says number three. Okay, anybody else? Somebody else said, well, you are quite the blonde, blonde bombshell, but um, Marilyn Monroe was bored on the West Coast, so they didn't think that that could be it either. Susan says number three. Let's see if any other votes roll in before I reveal the truth. Tammy says lightning. <laughs> that seems to be the popular choice. Bridget says number three. <laughs> Actually guys, that is a truth. I was somewhat struck by lightning when I was little, not like directly struck on top of my head, but the story goes that when I, and I remember it happening very vividly, I was probably like nine or 10 years old. And one of my favorite things to do when I was little was to take a whole bunch of books outside on the back porch and sit in a chair or in a swing and read my books while it was thunderstorming. Well, this one particular day, I had a pile of books in my lap and uh, I was sitting in a metal like lawn chair kind of thing that had cushions. And so the only part of my body that was touching metal was my hands because I had my hands sitting like on the um, the handrail, the the what do you call those? <laughs> armrests <laughs> on the armrests, and uh, let's see. And and the it was thundering outside, and then all of a sudden there was this really loud crack, and all I saw was a flash. And what had happened was was that it had actually lightning had actually struck a plug in right behind me and there was an extension cord plugged into that plug in but it wasn't plugged into anything else and it was about two feet or not two feet it was about that far away from the feet of my chair and so the lightning hit the outlet went through the cord jumped over to my chair and literally vaulted me out of my chair it shot me about six feet forward i landed on the edge of the porch and nearly went off the porch i didn't know what had happened i just knew that like i had jumped up all of a sudden but i didn't mean to jump up so I go running inside the house and my mom said, Did, you know, she, she knew that lightning had struck and she thought I, I had been hurt. And I was just like really shaken and I looked at my hands and I had red dots all on my hands and I felt really weird and like fuzzy for the rest of the day. So that's my been struck by lightning story. Um, it's, it's the weirdest thing and I'm, I'm thankful that it wasn't any worse than it was and I didn't have to go to the hospital. It's just one of those cool stories that happened to me when I was younger. Um, let's see, am I related to Marilyn Monroe? No, unfortunately I'm not. It would be cool if I was. I think that would be really cool. So uh, the, uh, that is the actual lie. And the, so the other true one was that I, I wanted to be a coroner when I grew up. And I know that sounds like a really weird thing for a kid to want to be. 
but I have always been fascinated by like the gross and disgusting. I know that's kind of weird, but like if there was a dead animal in our yard, I wanted to dissect it and check it out because I wanted to not like, know what made up the animal. And uh, I loved when we got to like dissect a frog in high school and all that stuff. And of course, I love CSI whenever, you know, the Las Vegas show, Crime Scene Investigation. I loved watching that. I just ate that up. And so I decided I wanted to be a coroner when I grew up until I found out how much schooling it takes. And then I was like, nah, forget that. So I ended up getting my elementary teaching degree and I taught school for one year, subbed for a lot more, and then ended up doing this. So <laughs> Tess says, yay, I win. Congratulations, Tess. She says, oh no, I thought it was number two. You wouldn't look at me and think that I wanted to dissect bodies for a living, would you? <laughs> That's just one of those weird things. And I have a lot more weird things. I'm like a weird person, so I have a lot more weird things I could have told you guys about me. So we may play this again, game again in another month or so if you thought it was fun. It's just a little bit of like weird facts about Tamara. So, all right. <laughs> I'll quit talking. You wish the camera directly on me was closer. Well, I can get it a little bit closer. The only thing is, is it might cut off the top of my head. Is that better? <laughs> it might cut off the top of my head a little bit, but... You love forensic stuff too. I'm even like the weirdo that like follows some forensic pages on Instagram and stuff. So I see like really gross pictures come through my Instagram. There was one that came up while I go that was a hand and the thumb looked like it was like dead and rotting off. And I showed it to my husband and he's like, oh, what is that? And I said, that's a snake bite, like a venomous snake bite. Like I find that stuff totally fascinating. Whereas other people would like lose their lunch. <laughs> And you became a teacher too. Well, we are just uh, two peas in a pod, Teresa. All right, so this one I started earlier today. It's gonna be for a baby girl. And uh, her name is Everly Grace. I've already got it written out in pencil. I don't know why I'm picking it up because you guys can see it from down here. But um, she said the nursery was gonna be in like a really soft pink and um, a dark coral and like gold with glitter. So we are fixing to add a bunch of really pretty coral flowers all over this thing. And um, I'm gonna kinda, I hope, like I've done this kind of flower a few times before for you guys, but never with this camera angle where you guys could better see what I was doing. So I'm hoping this will be helpful to some of you all. And if you think that you know somebody who would like to, to watch it as well, feel free to share it and maybe they can still catch it while it's live. Hi Victoria from Panama City. Your niece loves that stuff too. There's a few weird of us, weirdos in all of us, I think. You know, it's just one of those things. There's not everybody can do it, but that's what makes the world go around is everybody's different. All right, I'm just taking my little half inch brush here and I'm just doing like little wiggly flower shapes. They aren't like, they don't even really have perfect petals. They're just, we're doing little clusters of flowers. I kind of think of them like clusters of grapes. I'm gonna do one down here too. And I kind of want them to just look like they're just bunched up in the corner here, going all over the place. And then we'll add some shading to make them look better. Okay, so I'm gonna do a few up here and a few down here. My camera is like, my thing is frozen up. I hope you guys can still see me because my feed is frozen. Hopefully it didn't freeze up on Facebook as well. Maybe it's just my internet and my old iPad that's freezing up. I have had the, mo oh, which side is the top? This is gonna be the top right here. So it's like facing away from me right now. Um, we've had the most fun today in my live paint party group. We've been doing like little introduction videos and some of these women are like kind of intimidated because they've never done like a, a video before or posted a video online. And I said, that's okay. You know, you don't have to, if you don't want to, but it was so fun seeing everybody's videos and seeing like what they look like, what they sound like, where they're from, how many grandkids they have. And it just makes you feel like you get to know them a little bit better. And we've really had a good time today getting to know one another. So, if you haven't heard about our live paint party group, feel free to check that out. Um, you can find out about it at southernadornmentsdecor.com. And uh, it ends on, or the class closes August 20th. So, if you want to get in on it, sign up by August 20th. But we're going to be painting the cutest little Halloween witch uh, uh, owl dressed as a witch. You love the colors from Montgomery, Alabama. Well, welcome, June. I'm glad to have you here. All right. I didn't explain what I was doing because you guys actually couldn't see my paint plate. But I've got this coral color, and the coral is sold at Hobby Lobby. It is um, Anita's all-purpose acrylic paint. It is Coral Cove color, and I added a little bit of the flamenco red to it. 
I probably added too much, so I'm just gonna swirl just a tiny bit of it in over here because I just wanna create a slightly darker shade of the coral, but I don't want it to be red, just a little darker coral. Because we're gonna do like the highlighting and low lighting, like I was explaining um, in that last flower tutorial video I did where you're adding highlights and low lights to the flowers. And you can kind of test it and see like that, you can't hardly see. So that lets me know I need to swirl in some more red. You like the side-by-side -side view, but on your end, there's a shadow above and below shading out some of the view, if that makes sense. I don't know why. Is anybody else seeing that? On my screen, it looks pretty good, but I mean, it could just be something weird about her computer or, or whatever. So hopefully nobody else's is like that. So I'm just gonna swirl in some more red because that wasn't quite enough to show up. Um, I want it to be enough that you can see the lines pretty well. It's probably gonna take a lot more red than I think. Nicole, yours is like that too? Huh. Let me think what I can do to get the lighting a little better. Maybe if I readjust the camera or the camera angle. I don't know. It's like a reflection at the bottom. I wonder if it's the iPad screen reflecting on it. Let me move that over. Does that make it better? The lower part of both screens are shaded. Maybe that's because I've got my, um, oh, I see what you're saying. I think that's just this app that I'm using, but I didn't realize it was cutting off that much of the screen. It's the app that I'm using. It has to scrunch the pictures together to be able to get them, to fit them both on the screen. So it's, it's kind of like you're watching a movie in widescreen mode. Does that make sense? You know, or full screen mode and it's not formatted for full screen, you know, it kind of cuts off the top and the bottom. So if you hate this and next time you prefer to me to go back to the picture in picture, raise your hand, let me know, and we'll do that way next time. Because I was originally going to have it set up where this part was the main part of the screen and my face was like the picture, the small picture inside. So if you think that would work better for next time, um, we can do that. If you're watching on a phone, it might make it a little too narrow. I don't know if I can change it midway through. Give me a second and I'll check. Picture in picture mode, let's see. Well, I don't know how to do picture in picture with this one, but. I'm afraid I'm gonna mess something up if I press too many buttons because I'm not quite familiar with this. So we'll just leave it in this mode so you guys can see really well. Does that help? Is that better? Picture in picture, Susan says. <laughs> Hand is raised. Do you like this better where you can see? Long way, it makes it a little better. Like this? Is that better, Nicole? Let me get it. Okay. It's hard to see the screen because I have to keep standing up to check the screen to make sure I've got it in there. All right. Now we're in business. Tammy says yes. All right. So I've got my colors kind of mixed and I've swirled in most of this red here. And uh, you think the picture in picture was great, but maybe with the large picture showing the work and you in the small area. Uh, Dale, I think I'm going to get it set up like that next time. But it seems like now that we're in the middle of the video, it won't let me do that. So I'll just do that next time. But for right now, this will work great because you guys can see my hands working and uh, still hear my voice. Somebody had asked the other day if I was going to do or suggested that I should do a... Um, like Q&A session in a Facebook Live video. So if you guys think that would be something good to do, we can totally do that. I just said that um, I might have to take the questions ahead of time because the, every time I've gotten on here and said, does anybody have any questions? There's never any questions. Everybody clams up or it's like, you know, they're put on the spot and they can't think of what they want to say. So if that's something you guys think you might be interested in, I might like put a post on here in a day or two and say, you know, I'm going to be doing a Q&A later this evening. What are your questions? Okay. I'm going to flip it around and do the flowers on the other end. I'll put it this way. That way it's somewhat closer to the camera. I might even be able to zoom in. We're going to get fancy here. Oh, looky here. Let me push it up. Look, we're getting all te technical. <laughs> Miranda likes the Q&A. Wow, if you double check on the emotes, it throws up a whole bunch of them. 
<laughs> yeah, you can click the heart button like 50 times and it'll suddenly send up like 50 hearts. It's kind of cool. It's like giving me all the love. So I'm just taking this like reddish coral color that I've swirled together and I'm just doing little highlights around these flowers. And then we're gonna go back with a lighter color and do the same thing. Probably with white. I think the white would be bolder. Oh, that. <laughs> oh, I love all the little red hearts. Thank you. You like the idea of a Q&A. Okay, good. Maybe tomorrow or, no, maybe not tomorrow because I've already got something planned for tomorrow night's Facebook Live video. I'm going to um, paint like an anchor Thanks. for a teacher. So maybe the next day we can do a Q&A video. What app is this? It is the Studio Switcher Studio app. Switcher, like you're switching between cameras. Okay, so we've got like all our little highlights on the or low lights on these flowers. And then next we're gonna get some white and just get a really pointy little brush. I'm gonna get a skinnier than the one I just skinnier brush than the one I just used. Hey, we got a lot of guys with okay. up here on the left. And now you're just going and, and kind of like put a little dot in the middle and then just kind of put some of these little marks going around in a circular fashion. Not necessarily on top of the red marks, but kind of beside them, behind them, between them, you know, like that. I would love to paint some of these flowers on Charlie's wall in her bedroom but I'm gonna end up repainting the bedroom first, so I don't know if I'll try it or not. I'm kind of afraid that I'll like get tired of looking at them, you know? Not sure. Courtney, you tried to practice the flowers the way you do and they just look like blobs. Keep trying, girly, because it's, I mean, I didn't get it right the very first time. It, it does take a little bit of practice to kind of get the feel for it and for it not to feel um, awkward, I guess. What kind of tripod am I using? Um, I can put the link in there for you after the video's over. Um, you can get it on Amazon for like $13 and you can raise it up, I think as high as like 50 inches. So it's pretty handy dandy. Right now I've got it lowered down to its lowest setting. So it's only about a foot high above my project. I must have a serious lag in my iPad because it just now switched to showing me the um, closer up view of the door hanger. So I was sitting here watching it and I thought, man, I didn't get that very close. But um, it's actually just now catching up. So if I'm really late about answering your questions, that's why they're really slow. What kind of teacher am I? I have my teaching degree to teach kindergarten through fifth. And uh, I only taught for one year. And for part of the year I taught title one, which was like helping the kids who were behind in reading and math. And uh, then the second half of the year, I took over for a teacher who had to move out of town and taught second grade. And the funny thing was, is the classroom I was in, I was teaching in the same exact classroom that I was in when I was in second grade. And here I was teaching second grade in that classroom. So it was like I had come full circle. And you know what, one day I was actually cleaning out some supplies and found an old ruler with my name on it. It was kind of weird, it was like a time capsule. Okay. This is really good. Thank you, Tammy. Um, you ordered one that was like $13. That's probably very similar to the one that I've got then. You just made a plaque for a wreath. You think it's missing something, maybe adding the flowers. Yeah, you can post, pic Stephanie, you're in the group page. If you want, just post a picture in the group page and get everybody's input and see what they think. And I'll take a look at it and kind of give you what I think. Okay, I've got all these flowers done. Now we need some like greenery. So I'm gonna do some leaves and just um, kind of brighten it up a little bit because right now it just looks like a weird cluster of coral grape flowers. <laughs> I'm almost there. Activate now. Leaves are easy. They're just like little teardrop shapes. Push it. And some of them I do by themselves and some of them I do two of them. <laughs> Bless me for teaching elementary. Well, I'm not teaching it anymore, but I really did enjoy it. I actually enjoyed kindergarten more than any other group. They just, they're sweet at that age. You know, they don't uh, dislike learning yet. 
Okay, and then after the leaves, I'm just going to do some cute little like vine swirl type things going off of here. Not a bunch, but just a few. Right, kind of like that. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing down at the other end. Your video froze. Uh-oh. I hope nobody else's did. Mine keeps freezing up. So, hopefully it's still broadcasting really well. I was adjusting the camera to make sure you guys could see. I'm just going to keep doodling these leaves on here. Hopefully you guys aren't losing me. You started your student right. teaching today. That's wonderful, Miranda. What um what groups are you or what grades are you student teaching with? I did my student teaching with third grade and fifth grade. And it was kind of interesting because the teachers that I student taught with were so polar opposite. One was completely laid back and one was like really strict. But the kids, and so it kind of made the kids completely different too. And I don't know, like after experiencing both teaching styles, I think I'm more like the strict type teacher <laughs> just because I enjoyed the orderliness that was in her classroom. It was just a lot easier for me to relax and teach. And it was easier for the kids to learn too, I think, because they um, kind of knew what was expected of them and they didn't act out as much. Of course, there's a big difference between uh, third grade and fifth grade, and it was the fifth grade group that was more strict. So, I enjoyed that. Oh no, the video's freezing. I hope, I hope everybody's okay. I hope it's not freezing real bad. You worked in the high school and you graduated in 98, graduated in 90, oh, from that, hang on, I'm trying to read this. Some of the teachers were still there. It was awkward at first. Yeah, I had the same thing when I started teaching Some of the same teachers were still there that taught me so it was kind of like I'm sure I made them feel old just by being in the building I'm just using a really pointy brush. Oh wrong camera. I started to show it. It's got a bunch of stray bristles But I usually just uh, get them wet and straighten them out before I start with them Now I'm getting just a tad bit of white and just gonna do like a little highlight in the in the edge of each of these leaves so, do we know what the terminal is for this thing? And then maybe a tiny bit on these uh, vines. Oh, crap. I don't have a jetpack. Okay. Let me rotate again and do the highlights on this end. And so then we'll do the down. name and then we'll be done. I've already got a bow made for this one too. So lots of people ask how I attach my bows. I use a staple gun and I use a quarter inch staples so that they don't go all the way through. So if you've ever wondered, I just, I don't staple through the ribbon. I staple through the burlap. So, okay. We've got flowers. Video's good in Florida. Thank you, mom. Everybody say hello to my mother. Her name is Jan. Okay. We'll back this out a little bit and then turn it. Let's see, which way is gonna be? I guess I'm gonna have to do it this direction though because that's like facing me and I don't know if I could write somebody's name sideways. So bear with me. We're gonna do it this direction. It's your internet. Yeah, my internet's kind of crappy tonight too. I think it's because my husband's playing Xbox Live and this time of night it just kind of slows down a little bit and lags. We're gonna do the name in gold because this lady loves the gold. <laughs> Mom, Nicole says hi. <laughs> okay, um, I've already got the name drawn out on here. That's about the easiest way I know how to do cursive, a cursive name if I want it to look kind of fancy because it kind of makes sure all the letters are spaced the way I want them to be spaced. And so I usually do like a quick tracing of the letter with the paint. Oh, I'm glad you were able to catch me live, Anna. <laughs> Everybody's saying hi to mom now. My mama is down in Florida enjoying herself, and she told me, I don't know if I said this the other night in a video or not, but she said that she was missing me because she'd been gone for about two weeks, and she said, by watching you live, it's like I'm getting to spend time with you. So, it's kind of sweet. <laughs> I miss you, mama. All right, so I'm tracing each letter, but then like on the downstroke, I'm going to kind of fatten it out about double the width. So, this is a downstroke. I'm just kind of flattening my brush out a little bit to fatten the letter up. Are you going to get anything else off the ship? Just the downstrokes. Because it kind of makes it look more like calligraphy. 
or something like that. What brand of gold paint do I use? This one is Folk Art Metallic Pure Gold. It's the bland brand is Folk Art. You can get it at Walmart. Pure Gold is what this one's called. There's multiple kinds of, of gold though. There's one that's called Aztec and it almost has like a yellowy gold color to it. It's a little brighter. This one's more like your traditional gold. How long have I been painting? I make it look so smooth. I've been painting, um, doing door hangers since December of 2014. I started the business in February of 2015 when I was pregnant with Charlie. And um, I just started by copying stuff I'd seen on Pinterest and that was just kind of how I learned. You know, I just like was trying to emulate what I had seen and eventually, you know, you just kind of learn how to come up with stuff on your own and get better at it. And so that's just kind of how I've evolved into a painter. I mean, I wasn't always this comfortable with a brush or this comfortable even with lettering. It's yeah, just kind of been an evolution since the beginning. <laughs> you need me to make signs for when you make wreaths. I can do it, girl. I painted a couple of or I painted a little owl I posted a few days ago or last week for a lady in California um, to go on a fall wreath she was doing. <clears throat> is it translucent? This one is a little bit translucent, but like usually on the first stroke, it looks a little bit translucent. But then uh, if I go over it a second time, it's not quite so bad. Like the first stroke, I can usually still see my pencil line. So um, if you'll let your paint dry in between your first and second coat, it won't look so see-through. That's part of the reason sometimes I go through and just continue to trace the rest of the name. And then that way it gives it time to dry just a tad bit. Because if it's wet, then the paint won't stick to itself when you go back to do the second coat. You bought yours at Walmart. I buy all my paint at Walmart except for that coral color and that's only because I can't find that coral color at Walmart and I get panicky if I start to start running out of it because we don't have a Hobby Lobby real close. I mean I have to drive about 40 miles to get to the next Hobby Lobby. So I like to make a trip about once a month yeah, at least know. and get stocked up on okay. what I'm out of but it inevitably I always forget something that I, that I came for. I should just start making a list. That would be the smart thing to do. Okay, I'm gonna go back through and fatten up yeah. some of these downstrokes, which actually technically that was an upstroke, but oh well, I think it looked like it needed fattening up. Oh, <clears throat> it by accident. Sometimes I have to think, okay, what is the downstroke? Do y'all get it if I, if it's just me to find out, okay. Practice makes perfect, that's right, Angie. Um, I read a really good quote the other day, what was it? Um, any talent worth, or, or you want, you can become talented in anything that you're willing to practice. How true is that? You know, any sport that you want to become better at, you can, you can have a talent in that if you are willing to practice. Because I mean, think about the movie Rudy. He uh, wasn't the most talented or um, best built football player, but he was willing to put in the work. That's true with a lot of things. If you are wanting to become talented at painting, all you gotta do is paint, 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 more and more and more. All right, I'm just, from some angles, it looks more see-through than others. So I'll turn it this way so you guys can see it a little better. Maybe, let me look at the camera and see if it shows up pretty good. Right there, it kinda looks brown, but then you, you know, angle it up and it looks much more gold. All right, and then we're gonna attach the bow. Let me move the camera down this way. And here's the bow I made. I got the coral ribbon. And, well, actually both of these ribbons came from Hobby Lobby. So, what did I do with my staple gun? There it is. All right, join me again tomorrow night and I'll be painting an anchor and I'll be using my stencils again. I'm gonna be using a chevron and a polka dot stencil. So. Uh, thank you guys for joining me, and uh, let me see if I can get my camera back on myself. <laughs>
anyways, thank you guys for joining me for day nine, and I appreciate all of you guys so much. And if you will, please share the video. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.